Alrighty, fishing family. Today I'll be doing a review on the St. Croix Legend X casting rod. So this St. Croix rod right here, uh, in general, it's actually um, St. Croix's second uh, top of the line. Uh, St. Croix has a, a lot of different series, but the Legend series is, is, is a top of the line brand. Um, this one right here is actually uh, just false shy of, of second in place. This one right here is up there. It is made with all the high component parts, like Torzite guides and uh, the Fuji reel seat, and it is super balanced. Uh, this right here, uh, MRSP is for about $430. So it is pricey, but like I said, you get St. Croix's quality build with quality products. It also has a tapered enhanced technology built into the blank for improved action with increased uh, sensitivity. So as it pertains to the guides, St. Croix uses uh, Fuji's Torzite Tangle Free Guides to titanium frames uh, for unraveled 100% corrosion proof. That's what they're saying in the marketing. But uh, uh, if, if you guys are into rod building, Torzite guides are some of the most expensive guides out there. The guides in itself, um, when you buy a set like this, it actually runs about $70. So in a way, that itself, you're getting the most money out there, out of there as well. And the Torzite guides, which is the material they use inside this right here, has a very uh, hard uh, um, component to it, which makes it super smooth. Uh, and on top of that, as the line goes through it, it becomes almost frictionless. So you get more sensitivity, the durability that lasts longer. And on top of that, it's made out of titanium, so it's super light, giving this rod here super sensitivity and also making it uh, pretty much um, one of the tops among the fishing industry. Uh, I am gonna be measuring this to see how sensitive it actually is. Um, to do so, I, I wanna test it in a very, in the most re realistic possible way. So uh, what I did was I actually put my uh, sh uh, Shimano Crotto uh, DC on this as well. Uh, and what I found is that it actually pairs up really well with this rod. I mean, just kind of, kind of looking at that yellow, it kind of brings out the yellow and green inside the rod itself. So as you can tell, the rod has like a lot of yellow and green. So this happens to be a very nice matchup putting these together. But um, the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna test the weight of the tip because I understand when, when it comes to fishing, balance is important as well. Uh, sensitivity is good too, don't get me wrong. It is some, one of the most important things. But for me personally, I like balance. And what I mean by balance is when you put this reel on and you actually move it around, how light does it feel in your hand? Sometimes some rods, as I fish with it, the tip is heavy. And if I'm using it for jerk bait or, or anything in, in the long run, what happens is that my hands get tired and it becomes annoying. So I want a rod that is light, not just overall light, but actually tip light as well. So as I'm fishing, it has a nice balance to it and it doesn't uh, make my hand fatigue. So this rod here, I'm gonna do a test on that to kind of see what the weight is on the front. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to put the rod, spin this little, um, uh, the handle sideways, just so you can see like that to kind of find a nice balance. And I'm actually gonna leave it down in the front of here and then just like that. And I'm gonna take a measurement of the top over there, the front to kind of see how heavy it is. Okay, so I'm gonna test the balance of this rod. I actually have the real handle pretty much perpendicular to the rod. Um, that gives me a good sense of how much the tip of the of the rod weighs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on my scale and should be going to grams. Okay, I'm gonna put the rod tip on here just to kind of see how heavy it is. And it looks like it's sitting at about 11.79 grams. So that's how heavy the front is. All right, so this is gonna be how I'm gonna measure the sensitivity of this rod. Um, I designed this little bench test for here, I guess, I wanna call it, to actually measure the sensitivity. The rod is actually being supported on the back uh, and the contact is on the behind the rod, right where your hand sits, so you can get the full vibration of it. Um, I have braided line on this reel. The contact where the, where the sensor is gonna be is actually right here. I created some clips just to kind of mount that on there. Um, the braided line's gonna go through the rod, just as if you were fishing for real. It's going down here, down the line, I'm sure you can see it. And I have a drop shot, a 3 8 ounce sinker, and it's gonna be hitting these rocks as this thing right here pretty much turns around as you're dragging uh, your your uh, lures across the floor. It would be something like this. Actually, it's going the wrong way. Turn the other way. And your sinker will be 
flinging these rocks and dragging on the floor. And by doing so, it should be putting vibration through the rod. As you can see, the tip is kind of moving there. Okay. And then that will go all the way down the rod. And you can see the measure, the sensitivity measurement based on this app that I just down downloaded. It's called Vibe Sensor. And uh, based off the RMS value, I will be determining how sensitive this rod is. All right, so here's my first test. Um, as you can tell, I already have the drop shot sinker moving around my simulation environment. It's vibrating down the way down here. This is my first test. All I got to do is click this little button right here and start. And that's the first test. The app is called Vibe Sensor. And uh, what it does is that it actually uses the accelerometer inside your phones. Uh, and every phone has has an accelerometer uh, sensor built into it. Uh, and it's based on three axes. You have the Z axis, the Y, and the X axis. The Z axis is actually going up and down this way. So whenever your phone moves that direction, it senses it. The Y goes up and down this direction. And what that does is that it senses any kind of movement in that direction. And the X is actually going left and right this way. Uh, it's a great app, and, and what it does is that as it records these vibrations, it, ac it actually puts it into waves, which you can actually read. All right, so how I'm going to measure this is I'm going to use the RMS vibration value. Um, the app, what it does is that it actually generates a, a report for you as well once you finish it. And it gives you an, uh, a lot of data, but the one that I'm going to be looking at most, mostly is the RMS value. RMS stands for root mean square. Um, but in this situation, what's going on is that it's actually taking the vibration and turning it into waves and taking the random points from the sine wave. Along these points where it divides the sine wave, it's actually taking those averages, those average points, and it's finding the average across all of those points on the sine wave. And um, so by doing that, um, what this is going to do is that it's going to give me a way to measure the vibration right here. So that's how I'm going to be testing these rods for sensitivity. Um, obviously, the higher the number, the more sensitive. And uh, I, I know it's kind of hard to kind of like put that into how it actually feels. So what I'm going to be doing is that uh, this is one of my, the most more expensive rods that I can test. So I'm also going to be doing another test uh, with a standard $99 rod. Um, I decided to use the Phoenix, um, Phoenix Maxim, which is a nice average $99 rod. And I think by doing so, uh, you can kind of get an average feel of, of what that rod feels like. Um, and then you can actually reference that with a quality of St. Croix as well. Okay, so looking at the results, I can clearly say that the St. Croix Legend X is not just a nice looking rod, but the, sen but the sensitivity proves that it is amongst the industry's most sensitive rods as well. Taking a look at, at the RMS value average across accelerometers axis X, Y, and Z, I expected the Z axis to be high due to its measurements of rod motion going up and down this direction. But it was a surprise to me to find that the X RMS value was at a 22 millimeters per second per second. Uh, the sinker didn't, didn't move left and right a bit, but the movement was minimal. The fact that the rod can feel these slight vibrations was a big plus in, in, in my book. And that just kind of calls it to go left and right this way, just a bit. Now the Z axis came in at an average vibration score of 63.4 millimeters per second per second. This was higher than a lot of my, my other rods from 13 Fishing and uh, Phoenix. Um, in fact, comparing it to the $99 Phoenix Maxim, which came in at an average Z axis score of 47.6 millimeters per second per second, you can get a better picture of how much more sensitive the St. Croix Legend X actually is. Due to the nature of how Armas value is average though, um, a lot of the significant vibrations will water down. What I mean by that is that I wanted to highlight how many times the vibrations came in at a much stronger recording. Because uh, the RMS, like I said, what it does is that it takes the averages of the sine waves. Although there are a few slight high vibrations, it was watered down and it actually pulled it down. That's why uh, taking a look at the scores um, being 63.4, it doesn't look like it's too much far away from the maximum at 47.6. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to highlight how many times it actually went over the 200 millimeters per second mark 
and also the 400 millimeters per second mark. And this was much more higher vibrations that was actually felt. Taking a look at the waves, um, the wavelengths, and getting the average on how many times uh, it broke those vibrations was actually a way that I can actually see how sensitive this rod actually is as well. So by taking a look at it, you can clearly see that the, the times the Legend X went over those points nearly doubled the times that the $99 Phoenix Maxim did. So in conclusion, I want to say that the St. Croix does stand up to their marketing and produce very nice sensitive rods. If you are a fishing gear enthusiast who want the best or you do a lot of finesse style fishing where feeling everything is a must, I would pay the extra. Um, and if you don't want to break the bank or want a good entry level rod, get the Phoenix uh, Maxim. Uh, pretty much that's it for, for this rod review. Uh, thank you and don't forget to subscribe and let me know in the comments below what rod you want me to review next.